Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how we can change the background on an image. So we're going to be starting with this Valentine's photo and changing the background into this theme over here that we see here. The difference is that I'm going to change the background directly in this photo rather than cutting the character out of the dark out and popping it into this photo of heaven and hell. So in this photo, what we have to do first is separate the dark from the background. So the best way we can do that is with the scissor select tool, which is going to intelligently detect an object and create a wavy border around it to get a very close approximation of the shape we're trying to cut out. So if I use the scissor select tool and I go and click here for a starting point, we're going to end up with a dot. And if I click again, we're going to have another point. And you'll notice how, if we zoom in really close, that this connection between the two points, it's not a linear point to point connection, there's a lot of waves in between. It tries to find the areas where the color is different, the blue sky in the background, and contrast that with the white fluff down below. So it's going to separate those two. And as we add more points, uh, it's going to basically automatically find the edge of where the dog is at and get a pretty good approximation of the dog's fur separated from the background. Now, if you run into places like this where a little bit of the fur is getting cut off, you can add in an extra point here, and you can just keep adding extra points by left-clicking on the line that already exists. And that's going to allow it to kind of adjust and try to more precisely get a border around the dog's fur. So we just keep going down with this, really, until we get to the flower, and then it'll become a little bit more tricky. I'm not going to worry too much about every single little hair, because it has a very minor impact on the overall photo. Um, so we'll just worry a little bit more when we get down here to the flower. Now the flower obviously contrasts with the background, so the scissor select tool is still going to work for us. Um, but there are more intricacies here to this flower, so we'll need to be careful, maybe add a few more points in, to make sure it can accurately cut around the shape of the flower. And if you ever need to move a point because you put it in a wrong spot, you can just click on an already existing point and drag it while you press and hold the left mouse button down. So as you can see, the scissor select tool, it's really, really powerful. Uh, a great tool for jobs like this where you just want to get one color or a set of colors isolated from the background. And it takes a little while, but the result is worth it. So for the remainder here, I think I will just kind of speed it up until we've gone all the way around the dog and the rose. So as soon as you think you have a good selection made, click on the starting point to connect them. And then if you click inside the bounds of all of those points, it'll automatically take those points and turn it into a selection inside of your layer. So now we have the dog selected, including the rose here. So we can hit Control X, cut it out, and put this into a new layer. Now if we hide the original layer, we now basically have the dog separated from the background. So now we can pop in a new background. So what I'll do here is add the stairs file into the document as a new layer. And that will serve as the new background. So in this case, the image of the background isn't quite big enough, so I will scale it up a bit, holding down the control key in order to make sure the ratio stays the same. And I'll reposition it where I want it on the image. We'll worry about cropping off the top a little later. Now, one problem you're going to run into in situations like this where your background, your new background, is very different in its color scheme than the original image. You can see that the dog still has some of the original blue sky around its fur. So we can adjust that so that it's more closely resembling the actual background here by doing a hue color adjustment. So if we go up to the colors menu on the dark layer and go into hue saturation, we can take each of these colors, namely in this case magenta, blue, and cyan, and adjust those more towards red. Because if you look at the lighting going on here, it's some white up in the sky by heaven. And then in the pit of lava below, you've got a lot of reds and oranges. So we want to take this blue and shift it more towards red. So I'm going to take each of these individual colors, magenta, blue, cyan. I'm going to adjust the hue over to the right, which is going to make it a lot more red. Don't want to overkill it. Maybe about 50, 60 points is okay. And I'll do the same for each of these colors. So that the color on the dog's fur and the cloud area around is a lot closer to the actual color you would see in the image. 
Another option we can do is decrease the saturation if we don't want the color to stand out that much. So, lowering the saturation down, it's going to remove a lot of the overall color and make it less vibrant. And then with this magenta over here, also lower down the saturation a bit. But that's just a rough approximation. You can play around with it a little bit more. Um, but here, I think we'll hit OK for now. And the last thing I'm going to do is just try to kind of clean up these edges a little bit. And I think I will do that with the eraser tool. So any area that seems kind of too sticking out and not very fluffy, I'll just try to kind of smooth it over with the brush tool and make the edges a little less hard. Note that my brush has 50 hardness, not 100%. So it's going to be a little bit soft on the actual decrease of these edges. It'll leave a little bit remaining. And I think overall that'll be a good thing in this case. Okay, so after going around the edges with the brush, it does look a little bit smoother here. Now, because the lighting on top is a lot more white and down below, it should be a little bit more lava colored. I'm thinking in this case, we could try applying a gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and see if this gives us a little bit cooler of a color. So first, I'm going to create a new layer. And now I'm going to make a selection from this layer. And on this new layer, I'm going to put a gradient on top of it. So use the color picker, and I'm going to choose the white of the celestial angel area up there. And then on bottom, I want to grab something along the lines of this orange down here. So with the selection made on this new layer, I'm going to do foreground to background color. And we'll do a gradient, something like this. But I'm going to lower the opacity down a huge amount. But I'll take this layer, and I'll put it under the dark, and now I think I'll lower the opacity of the dark layer by a little bit, and now some of that orange and white is showing through depending on the area. So I think one more thing I want to do is kind of lower the brightness of the dark down a bit, so I will go up to colors and we'll do a brightness contrast change, and I'm going to lower the brightness down, but I think I'm also going to increase the contrast to make it a little bit more stand out. I mean, the theme of the overall image is kind of dark, so I think this is kind of cool. So a little bit more contrast, a little bit less brightness, and maybe if we lower the opacity down. I also think that the gradient effect is showing a little bit too much, so I'm going to increase this opacity up here to about 95 96%, so that it only shows through very, very mildly. And now I think that's not too bad. So what we'll finally do is crop the image. So I'm going to get rid of that Valentine's Day layer, the original background. And lastly, I'm going to take the new background and I'm going to crop the image to the selection. So here I will do auto crop image. And now we pretty much have it as we want it. Now uh, you can see one little mistake I made uh, when I was doing this as a select tool at the bottom. I did get part of the dog cut off, but that's okay. We can just take these two layers here and drag them down just a bit. So I'm going to hold shift and then control and move it straight down. So 10 pixels and then this one up here. I'll hold shift, click, and then control to drag it down. 10 pixels so that they're sitting right on top of each other. And now, finally, to compare it to the original image, here we have the dog with the rose in its mouth in a lovely Valentine scene. And here we have it with the new background with a few minor color adjustments made. So, I hope that this tutorial has helped you guys learn how to change the background on an image and have the character make a little bit more sense in the context of the background. I've been Chris, thanks for watching this GIMP tutorial, and I will see you guys in my future video content.